Hello everyone, I am Yifan Dai, a PhD student from University of Wisconsin-Madison. I'm going to present Bobon, a project in which we explore the integration of learning nexus into log-structured merge trees. This work is done in UW Madison with the help of Brian Cross from Microsoft. The amount of data keeps increasing nowadays, and it is an important problem in systems to look up data efficiently. Given an array of data, how should we perform a lookup? With limited information, the best we can do is linear search. What if the data is sorted? With this information, binary search is a better choice. Then, what if the data is huge? Again, let's assume that our data is at least partially sorted. Traditionally, people have built data structures to accelerate lookups. B-tree, for example, records the position of the data to achieve logarithm lookup time with relatively low memory cost for the indexes. It is a popular data structure suitable for general use cases. Now, can we do even better with more information, for example, if we know the data distribution? The answer is yes. If we can express the data distribution as a function, we can achieve theoretically constant lookup time. With the help of machine learning, we can learn the data distribution, construct a function that maps keys to their positions, and record it for future queries. This technique is called learn indexes, a new area of interest starting from 2018. Let's look at an example here. We have an array of even integers starting from 100. A simple linear regression model learns the mapping to be 0.5x minus 50. Now, if we want to query key 100, we simply plug in x equals 100 and know that this key is at position 0. As we can see, we reach constant lookup time, and the memory cost of such a model is also constant, containing only the slope and the intercept. But there are challenges to the learn index technique. The main question is how to support insertions efficiently. Insertions will change the data distribution, so the previously learned model is no longer correct. We either need to retrain the model, or the accuracy of the model is lowered. Also, previous works study learned indexes with only data structures, and we need to find a way to integrate this technique into production systems. We'll present Bobon to answer these questions. Bobon is a learned index for log-structured merge trees built into a production quality system, Whiskey. By taking advantage of some nice characteristics of LSM trees, Bobon handles writes with ease. We show that LSM tree fits learned indexes well, mainly because it arranges data into immutable SS tables, and there is no in-place updates to these tables during writes. We derive several learning guidelines on how and when to learn these tables from careful studies on LSM characteristics. We develop a cost-benefit analyzer to predict if a learning is beneficial during runtime. Bobon improves read-only and read-heavy workloads by 1.23x to 1.78x compared to the baseline whiskey. It also has about 1.1x gain for write-heavy workloads, as it has no overhead to writes. I'll give a brief introduction to LevelDB. It is a key-value store based on LSM tree. It has two in-memory tables and a number of on-disk SS tables organized in seven levels. Each SS table is represented as a file. Updates and insertions are first buffered in one main table and then moved to another in-memory table. The write continues to pile up in the main table while the previous one is compacted into SS table on level zero. This process continues until the size of level zero exceeds a certain threshold. Then, one or more tables in level 0 is compacted to level 1. When level 1 is full, level 2 starts to be filled similarly. And this process continues to lower levels. This compaction mechanism ensures that there is no in-place updates to SS tables during writes. Those tables remain unchanged until deleted by compactions. Upon lookups, in-memory tables are first searched and the SS tables from upper to lower levels are searched. 
the range of keys in an SS table is recorded, and if the target falls into the range, the table is loaded and searched. The search may not find the target key. In such cases, which we call a negative internal lookup, the search proceeds to the next file or the next level until we have a positive internal lookup. Since those on disk tables are immutable during their lifetime, it is natural to learn a model for each table. There is no need to update these models during writes and they keep a fixed accuracy. There are two important factors if we want to learn at SS table granularity. The lifetime of SS tables and the number of lookups into SS tables. The lifetime represents how long a model can be useful and the number of lookups represents how often a model can be useful. We conduct an experiment to study the lifetime of SS tables. We find that for a specific workload, the lifetime of tables at lower levels is much longer than those at higher levels. Specifically, level zero tables live for 10 seconds on average, while level four tables live for an hour. Further, there are a few very short-lived tables at every level due to consecutive compactions on newly generated tables. Their lifetime are less than one second. This leads us to the first two learning guidelines. First, favor learning tables at lower levels, since they live longer and models for them are valid for a longer time. Second, wait shortly before learning to avoid learning extremely short-lived tables. The number of lookups is more interesting. It is affected by various factors, such as workload distribution and load order. There are situations where higher level tables serve more negative or even positive internal lookups despite their shorter lifetime. Then we come to our next two guidelines. Learning guideline three, do not neglect higher level tables. Since they may serve more internal lookups, meaning that models for them are more often used. Learning guideline four, be workload and data aware as various factors can change the number of lookups into tables. The system must dynamically collect relative data to decide whether to learn a table or not. Next, I'll talk about the learning algorithm we use and the design of Bobon. We use greedy piecewise linear regression to map keys to their positions. It produces multiple linear segments to approximate the data distribution. Given a key, the model predicts a position with an error bound and guarantees that the real position is within this interval. The error bound is a predetermined parameter for the model, and we set error equals eight in Bobo. Greedy PLR is efficient in both training and inference. The data set is processed in one pass during the training, which is own time complexity. During inference, we do a binary search between the segments, taking logarithmic time in terms of the number of segments. We build Bobon on Whiskey, which optimizes level DB by key value separation. Whiskey stores values in a separate value log and stores key value address pair in the LSM tree. This largely reduces read and write amplifications with a smaller LSM tree. Bobon takes advantage of the key value separation technique to convert large and variable size values to a constant value address in the LSM tree. Then, with a fixed key size, we have constant-sized KV pairs in the LSM tree. It is much easier to predict the position of a target when the pairs are in the same size. A GET request in Bobon follows the baseline whiskey pass until an SS table file is reached. An SS table contains an index block and hundreds of data blocks. The index block records the largest key in each data block. The baseline pass will load and binary search the index block to decide which data block the target lies in, and then load and binary search the data block. Instead, Bobon consults a model which outputs an interval that contains the target KV pair. We then load the target chunk of data and the binary search within the chunk to find the target. Finally, the value is looked up in the value log, which is the same as the baseline. In workloads that contain writes, there will be newly generated SS tables. Always learning these tables would result in the best foreground workload latency, 
but also a higher background learning time. This would hurt performance if we have no extra CPU cores to do the learning. On the other hand, if we do not learn these new tables, our benefit will be lower. We make a balance by applying a cost-benefit analyzer that aims to minimize the total CPU cost. The analyzer estimates the cost of learning a table and the benefit the model will offer. It decides to learn if the estimated benefit is larger than the estimated cost. The analyzer uses the statistics collected from previous tables at the same level. Bobon records the number of lookups into a table and the lookup time of the baseline pass and the model pass. These information are used to estimate the benefit of a model. The cost of learning depends on the number of data points in a table and is estimated by the table size. We show the effectiveness of our cost-benefit analyzer by workloads with different right percentages. The graph below shows the foreground time and the learning time on workloads with 10% writes and 50% writes. We'll compare four items, the baseline whiskey, a policy that only learns offline and doesn't learn new tables, a policy that always learns new tables, and a policy with our cost-benefit analyzer. The bars below are the foreground workload time, and black bars on top of it are the background learning time. At lower write percentages, there are fewer new tables and lots of lookups. Thus, learning is likely to be beneficial. We can see from the left part of the graph that, at 10% writes, our analyzer decides to learn as much as the always learn policy does, thus providing a better foreground latency than the baseline and the no-learn policy. At higher write percentages, there are lots of new tables and they live shorter with fewer lookups, so learning may not be beneficial. We expect our analyzer to learn only a portion of them that it predicts to be worthwhile. At the right side of the graph, we can see that at 50% writes, our analyzer only learns about 10% of the amount that always learn policy does, but still maintains a foreground latency close to the always learn policy. Then we look at the total CPU time. We can see that our cost-benefit analyzer has the lowest total time for both write percentages, achieving our goal of minimizing total CPU cost. We evaluate Bobon with various micro and macro benchmarks. We will show a selected portion of them in this presentation. In the experiments, we put the database in memory to reduce the data access time, as learn indexes can only speed up the indexing time. We will come back to this condition later and show that we can still yield benefit even when the data is not in memory. First, can Bowman perform well on different data sets? It is important that learn indexes adapt to different data sets. We test Bowman on four synthetic data sets, linear, normal, segmented linear with 1% segments and 10% segments each having 64 million data points. We also use two real-world datasets, Amazon Reviews and OpenStreetMap New York. The Amazon Review dataset contains 33 million entries of reviews and we use the review ID as keys. The OpenStreetMap dataset contains 22 million entries of user annotation of landmarks in New York State and we use landmark ID as keys. The table shows how many segments are generated by our algorithm and the percentage of segments, which is the number of segments divided by the number of data points. As we binary search within the segments to find the right one, the number and the percentage of segments is critical to our performance. The right graph shows the latency comparison between Bowman and baseline whiskey over different data sets. We can see that for synthetic data sets, Bowman offers the highest gain for the linear dataset, which has minimal number of segments. And its gain is lower when the number of segments increases. The two real-world dataset has around 1% segments, 
and Bobon shows about 1.6 x gain for them. We then study the performance of Bobon on different request distributions. We measure the lookup latencies on the read-only workloads with six request distributions, sequential, defiant, hotspot, exponential, uniform, and latest. We run the experiment on the two real-world datasets. The graph below shows the latency comparison of Bourbon and Whiskey under these request distributions. We can see that Bourbon accelerates lookups by about 1.6x regardless of request distributions. We then want to show if Bourbon performs well on real benchmarks. We use the YCSB benchmark running the six core workloads with default configurations on the default dataset. The graph below shows the throughput comparison. YCSBC is a read-only workload, and Bobon offers the highest gain, over 1.6x. YCSBB and D are read-heavy workloads, and Bobon can speed up most operations, resulting in about 1.35x gain. For write-heavy workloads YCSBA and F, Bobon improves the performance by around 1.1x. The gain is lower because a large fraction of operations are writes, and many internal lookups into the newly generated tables takes the baseline path. YCSBE consists mostly of range queries, and Bobon reaches about 1.2x gain. We also run the benchmark on the two real-world datasets, and the result is similar. In summary, Bobon's gain holds on real benchmarks. We also show that Bobon improves performance of read operations without affecting the writes. Finally, we come back to the condition that data resides in memory. We asked if Bobon is beneficial when the data is on storage. We run the YCSB core workloads on the default dataset, and the data resides on an open SSD. The throughput comparison is shown in the graph below. We can see that Bobon offers over 1.3x gain for the read-only workload, about 1.2x gain for read-heavy workloads, and 1.05x gain for write-heavy workloads. Even when the data is present on a storage device, Bobon can still offer benefits, and we expect Bobon to perform better with emerging storage technologies. In conclusion, Bobon integrates learned indexes into a production LSM system and shows benefits on various workloads. We present learning guidelines on how and when to learn and applies a cost-benefit analyzer to decide whether a learning is worthwhile during runtime. In the era of machine learning, we are now thinking about a broader question, that how machine learning will change computer system mechanism. Besides the lookup process that Bobon improves, what other mechanisms can machine learning replace or improve? Whatever it is, careful study and deep understanding of the underlying systems are required to fully utilize the power of machine learning. Please refer to our paper for more detailed learning guidelines, implementations, and evaluations. Thank you for watching.